This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is KOA.2. The standard reads, solve addition and subtraction word problems and add and subtract within 10. Example, by using objects or drawings to represent the problem. Now the best use of time and effort for this standard would be to use the contextual problems that are involved as part of your regular instruction especially in conjunction with the counting and cardinality domain and the operations and algebraic thinking domain. For example, the third standard in the counting and cardinality uh, domain is focused on writing numbers from 0 to 20. And in standard 7 of that same domain, students compare two numbers between 1 and 10 that are presented as written numerals. And in the operations and algebraic thinking domain, the third standard uh, states the expectation is that students will decompose numbers less than or equal to 10 into different pairs. And that will be an integral part of how they solve the word problems. For operations and algebraic thinking, the introductory statement reads, understand addition as putting together and adding to and understand subtraction is taking apart and taking from. So that's how we'll approach these word problems. Let's try this problem. Last week Angela received three stars for good behavior. This week she received four stars for good behavior. How many has she received all together? So you would want some type of manipulatives, you know, some kind of little uh, stars, uh, cutouts, or whatever that you uh, can come up with. So students will start with 1, 2, 3 from last week, and then 4, 5, 6, and the last one to count would be 7. So they know all together that Angela got 7 stars for good behavior. Now notice, here's another connection to a standard in this same grade level. Uh, standard uh, KCC.4 starts, understand the relationship between numbers and quantities. Connect counting to cardinality. And in particular, standard B says, understand that the last number named said tells the number of objects counted. The number of objects is the same regardless of their arrangement or the order in which they are counted. So again, notice the connection that when students solve this problem that way by counting, you're also addressing this standard. So again, a contextual based uh, standard like this one where we're talking about solving addition and subtraction word problems, something in context, you're able to address other standards simultaneously. Now going back to the third standard, KCC3, uh, that one was focused on writing numbers from 0 to 20, so you might also uh, have students do this. So when we set up the problem, we can write down the symbols, you know, three for the three stars here and four for the four stars over here, and of course with the plus symbol uh, to indicate addition. Then uh, the equal sign to indicate, uh, you know, the solution on the other side. So if we take three plus four and we add them all together, well, let's see, there's three, and then there's four more, and we, when we connect all of these together, and count, we have a total of seven. And so have students you know, write the symbolic representation for seven for the solution. Let's try a different problem. Blake's mother bought six apples. That afternoon, Blake ate one and his sister ate one also. How many apples are left? Now notice the way this problem is set up. We have Blake ate one and his sister ate one also. The reason that this problem is deliberately set up this way is that in the future students are going to hit a little bit of a, an obstacle because they get used to having problems where it's just one step. But when they get to multi-step problems that involves two or more steps, then it gets a lot more difficult. And doing something like this will help them get uh, some experience with that. So rather than saying, for example, that Blake ate two apples, uh, we set it up this way to, again, actually make it a multi-step problem. Now the expectation here, 
would be okay. Uh, you start off with six apples, and Blake ate one, and his sister ate one. So we're left with one, two, three, four, and that's pretty much uh, you know the standard way of solving it. What you would also want students to do is to write the symbolic representations to where you know, we'd have something like this, but we have a problem because that's a little bit just too much. This is over the top. That's too much for kindergarten students to handle. So really what you would want to do is treat this like two separate problems. So let's start with Blake. So Blake eats one apple. And so this takes care of Blake. And so what happens now is that we have this many left, which is, of course, five apples and have students write down the symbolic representation. Now we can go on to the second part of the problem, where we now have five apples, and his sister eats one. And so we have this situation now. And now students can finish out the problem. And she ate her apple. So we're left with this many, which of course would be four apples that are left. Now this is real easy to do. Don't overlook sums and differences involving zero. I know that it sounds a little bit simplistic, but students need practice with this. So let's look at this problem. There are seven red blocks on the table. The teacher put them all away in the closet. How many red blocks are left on the table? Well, symbolically, what would happen here is that all of the red blocks were taken away from the table and put away. And so they're gone. And our solution is zero. Again, this is important because you're laying the foundation for the idea of uh, actually the additive inverse. When you subtract something from itself, you'll always get zero. Let's look at another example. There's five blue blocks on the table. The teacher forgot to put them away in the closet. How many blue blocks are left on the table? Well, none got taken away, so we still have the same amount of blocks left on the table, so it's actually five subtract zero for a solution of five. So again, you're laying the foundation for the idea that when you add or subtract zero, you still get the same solution.